will make it warmer, please. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Did you watch that film where, uh, a very popular film where the actor says, good morning, Bombay? Did you? That is actually a very good copy of a, another English film which says, good morning, Vietnam. You know, you must watch that movie. It's, it's a wonderful movie, good morning, Vietnam. Okay. Right. <coughs> Let's talk about today. Uh, beginning today, we are going to talk about production of speech sounds. I told you yesterday that human beings produce through their body all kinds of sounds, but not all of them may be, sometimes they may be, but not all of them may be speech sounds. Here on this course, we are directly concerned with speech sounds. Human beings have a unique capacity to talk. They can talk in dark, they can talk while running, they can talk even while sleeping. Do you know anyone who talks in sleep? Lots of people talk while asleep. People talk even when eating. No other animal can do that. I told you yesterday. Dog cannot bark while there is a bone in its mouth. But human beings can, you know, the best of their quarrels take place at the dining table. Right? Human beings have the unique, they can talk underwater. They can talk even when you gag their mouth. Gag your mouth yourself and do try and say good morning. Okay? You, you, that's a very versatile capacity, you know. They can talk through their nose. They can say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sit straight, you know. I, I remember I had a grand aunt who would not speak while on prayer and as children when he disturbed her, she would, you know, scold us through her nose. Mm -hmm. Okay? You understand. Human beings have a very powerful brain and not an equally, but almost equally powerful, please write, vocal apparatus. a very powerful vocal apparatus. This enables them, this vocal apparatus enables them to produce a variety of sounds under a variety of circumstances, under a variety of conditions, whether you are emotionally disturbed or otherwise. It may be a lecture or a conversation. It may be soft voice, sweet like honey, or it may be bitter voice like chili, you know, no matter what. Human beings have a wide range. They can whisper such that a fly is not disturbed. They can shout such that a lion can be frightened. Human beings have enormous capacity with language. And part of that reason is because they have a very versatile vocal apparatus. Actually, some people say that human beings can speak like any other creature in the world. If you look at them, look at these creatures from the point of view of language, they can, you can classify, you can have four kinds. Unfortunately, I did not put the fourth kind here, you know. Human beings can talk like reptiles. Reptiles are not here. Can you name any reptile, please? Snake, crocodile, lizard. Anything else? They, they speak in one way. They produce hissing sound like sss, sss. Produce that sound. Everybody please do it. Sss. They produce hissing sound. Okay? And they converse. Those who have studied communication among reptiles and I mentioned, uh, well, have I mentioned this book to you, Animal World by somebody called Gerald Durrell. Please write.
I am not, I am not too sure about the title, okay, but I am very sure about the author. Google Darrell, Google Animal World and you will find perhaps the best book you may have read, read on communication among animals. Actually, the Times Literary Supplement said while reviewing this book that if animals had a Nobel Prize, this book would get a Nobel Prize. It is extremely well written, you know. It is almost like a fiction. Particularly, I recommend this book particularly to those whose English is not good, quote unquote good. Okay? You will not only learn English, you will also learn something about the animal world. So, through hissing sound as well, snakes and crocodiles and lizards and other kinds of reptiles have a lot of conversation, have a lot of quarrel, have a lot of plans, have a lot of you know time happy or bad time together, but they produce only one kind of sound. What is that? What is that? Yeah, even if even if very angry, cobra can only produce a hissing sound. Have you seen a cobra? I am sure those from the village may have seen it and otherwise you can walk to the snake park here, you know, your neighbor okay, and look them. Then there are bees and flies. They produce buzzing sound. They do not speak, but their you know wings flapping produce buzzing sound, something like zzzz. do it. Keep doing it, please do it, everybody, please. So, human beings can speak like flies, butterfly. You know, human beings have enormous capacity. We can produce buzzing sound. In many of our languages, we have a sound like zzz, do not we? Do not we? In English, when you say is, that is a buzzing sound. Okay? Or we can talk like birds, you know, not only Twitter. Uh, you know, the birds as they talk to one another, they have very lovely sweet, many of them, maybe not all, but many of them have such lovely, you know, communication systems. They sing, they coo, they produce such sweet sound, something like do it, whistling sound. How many people can whistle? Do it, free, please. I want to, I want, I want the world to see that IIT, you know, students at this institute are proper human beings. They know, yeah? Please, produce this sound. Those who do not know, please take tuition from those who know. Easy, you know, very simple. Just round your lips and produce some. Let air stream go out. By sunset, you will be producing, you know, whistling sound. There can be variety of whistling sounds, not just one. There can be frightening. There can, you know, those, you know, look at the, talk to the actors, talk to the magicians, talk to the street vendors. They produce a variety of uh, sounds in, in, in villages, etc. You know, in agricultural areas where distance is used to be long. Now, of course, everybody has a mobile phone, but earlier, you know, when I was your age or even younger, uh, you know, there was not any mobile phone and people would shout or people would whistle, because whistle travels longer distance. Its fundamental frequency may be low, but its formant frequency, terminal frequency is very high. That is why birds can listen to one another from long distances. There is a lot we can learn from birds as engineers, as in engineering sciences. Read this book. I am terribly serious when I recommend these things to you, you know. Birds have the radio frequency. Birds fly in a formation and those who have studied say that when they fly in formation, they fly at least 40 percent faster than they do when they fly individually, you know. Nature has given us all a variety of abilities. So, whistling can also be of a different of various kinds, you know. So, you know human beings can talk like birds, they can talk like flies, they can talk like uh, snakes, they can also talk like dogs or lions, barking sound. Can anybody produce barking sound? <laughs> wow, wow, produce it, come on now, come on. You see, we are learning. Inhibition is all right when you do 
if it good things for bad purpose. There is nothing like good or bad in the world. Our philosophies would tell you. It is intention. If you are giving somebody sweet, but with a bad, you know, intention, then sweet is bad. Okay? Come on, do it. Wow, wow. wow, wow, wow. Oh, everybody, please. <laughs> Looks like it was a class of ghosts. Come on, produce some noise. One, two, three. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> you see, some people can do it. I, you know, some people can do it really well. Congratulations to you. But how can you do it well? The question, <laughs> please come back, okay? You see, nature has been very kind to us. The Bible says, I don't know, I'm, I'm not a scientist. Bible says, God created man. By man, he meant both man and woman. In his own image, gave human beings a variety of abilities. This is the only creature which can survive under the earth, above the earth, under the water, perpetually snow, snow capped places like Alaska or the Himalayas or Ladakh. Okay? Similarly with voices. Human beings can produce, please write. Various types of speech sounds, they can produce hisses, okay? they can produce buzzes. What is it? What is it? Buzz. Buzzes. Buzzes. They can produce bangs, such as wow, wow. Okay, bangs. They can produce glides, bird like bird like, you know, cooing sound, gliding sound, shouting, roaring, or whispering, or singing, or quarreling. You know, the range of human faculty in voice is extremely large. When you read more about phonetics, I have given you references to books. Uh, you can also Google. Many books are available. I am also going to give you link to lectures on phonetics. Look at some of them if you find time and there is a lot to be learnt how nature has done engineering with us. Human beings can produce, please repeat after me, hisses, hisses. buzzes, buzzes. Bangs, bangs and glides. Close your eyes. Human beings can produce hisses, hisses buzzes, buzzes, bangs, bangs and, glides. and glides. Now I will ask you questions and you will complete. Human beings can produce hisses, hisses buzzes, buzzes, bangs, 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 bangs. Once again, please. Human beings can produce hisses, hisses buzzes, buzzes, bangs, bangs, bangs. Right. Variety of sound. How is that possible? What did nature give us? that it did not give to snakes or lions, that it did not give us to flies or birds. Of course, it gave us a very powerful brain, the best that nature has. Okay? It also gave us some matching apparatus, the vocal apparatus. Look at the diagram of this vocal apparatus. Can you draw it? I will give you three minutes. I, I, I guess you guys have done courses in engineering drawing, am I right? Okay? I will give you three minutes. Draw it outline and make it look like human beings. You know, don't make it look like croc crocodile or frog. Okay? And also label the parts. You can ignore me huh, for the few minutes. Camera, please, and just look at the notebooks. I do not need to be there in the camera. Okay? D make the relative position correct. It does not matter whether you draw large or small, but let the relative positions be okay. okay. And do some practice back in your room. Now, 
you can look at any of the notebooks if you can, if it is easily possible. You didn't pass your course in engineering drawing. <laughs> Not bad. Wow, that's great, man. Did you get a distinction in engineering drawing? Yes. Lovely. Are you, are you drawing a tank or a mm -hmm. jaw of the human being? This student has a good drawing, so you can later, you know, when he finishes, you can capture it. Don't worry, let the relative position be okay. Oh, this is a nano vocal cord, so small. Yeah, good enough. Do it back in your room as well with a good pencil, yeah. HB2 or some such thing. Are you able to get it okay? Are you drawing a cuckoo or a human being? Not bad. Label it. Label it. Are you able to see? Okay. These are the parts. So find where they are. Sorry, I took a bad. I, I'll change it. Okay. I didn't take a good copy. I'm so sorry. So you you will know where jaws are, where lips are, where teeth are. Okay. That's why I named it outside. The diagram. Tongue and teeth. Can you please capture? Okay. So, you know, you, 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 I think you have no difficulty recognizing jaws, lips, nose, tongue, teeth, alveolar ridge. This is alveolar ridge, you know, behind your upper teeth, behind your upper teeth here. This is alveolar ridge. Then hard and soft palate, this is hard palate, this is soft palate. In some books, you find it mentioned as velum. V E L U M, velum. Okay. This is uvula, what in our common language we call little tongue or small tongue. Okay. So this is uvula. This entire thing is pharynx. You see, this entire thing is pharynx. When you laugh, your pharynx swell. When you shout, your pharynx swells. Okay? Uh, then this box, it is sometimes in some, you know, you will find it mentioned as larynx. Okay? In some books, you will find it mentioned as glottis. There is minor difference between the meaning of two ter meanings of two terms, but call it what you like. We in general language call it Adam's apple. Inside the Adam's apple, there is a very highly sensitive diaphragm which vibrates at the pressure of air and that is called, please write, in some books you will find it mentioned as vocal folds. Excuse me. In some books you will find it mentioned as vocal folds. In many other books, you will find it mentioned as, please write, vocal cords. So, basically, basically this is the vocal apparatus or organs of articulation. Okay? Some people, of course, you know, also use their hands while speaking. They cannot speak unless they move their hands. You know, they, they, you know, in, in their case, 
movement of hand is almost inevitable. It's like, you know, theater. On this side, I have love. On that side, I have my parents. My parents are saying, don't marry this boy or girl. My love says, marry this boy or girl. Oh God, what should I do? Okay. Some people always speak like they were in a theater. But you can also speak without moving your hand. Can you? Say yes or no, please. Yes. You can speak without moving your hand, but you cannot speak without moving your lips. Can you speak without moving your lips? Can you speak without moving your tongue? Can you speak without the help of your jaws? Can you speak without the help of your uvula or vocal cords? So, there are some organs who, which, which are, you know, which have a direct role in articulation. Please write. Those organs are called organs of articulation which have a direct role in articulation. If you do not use them, you cannot speak. So, hands and feet and eyes in this subject, in this course are not organs of articulation. Of course, you know you can speak a lot through your eyes, you can listen a lot through your eyes, okay? but for this course, quote unquote, we will not call them organs of articulation. Organs of articulation constitute the list given here, jaws, lips, etcetera, etcetera, etcetera. Okay? Some of these organs, you know, they do not have the same function, they do not have a, they do not have the same function, but they function in unison, they function in collaboration with one another. Okay? There are some organs which are static, they do not move. Look at your two jaws, do both of them move? In, in the case of human beings, it is the lower jaw that moves. You can only slightly open it and say, you can fully open it and shout. You can say, wow, do it. Please, I want you to do it. Come on, do it, please, everybody together. Okay? First whisper okay? and now shout. Wow. Wow. Ah, lovely, that is great. You see? So, your, it, that shout is not possible, that shout is not possible if your jaws do not open. Hold your jaws and now try and shout. No, you cannot, you see. But in the case of other creatures like somebody said crocodiles, upper jaw opens, their lower jaw does not. In some other cases, snakes, both their jaws expand, that is why they can swallow a huge thing. Okay? They only swallow, they do not know how to chew because they do not have teeth for chewing. They have a fang which, you know, uh, ex, you know we, we, which secretes venom, otherwise you know they, they, they cannot chew anything. So, in their case, both their jaws open or expand, they, they have the elasticity. But in the case of human beings, only the lower jaw opens up to a certain, uh, you know, uh, distance or closes. Tongue, look at the tongue. You know, the tongue can move in, in, in a variety of different ways and slightest difference in the position of the tongue can produce many different kinds of sounds. Say, for example, you know, produce a sound like a, do it. Your, the blade of your tongue expands towards your molar teeth. Okay? You cannot stop it. If you do not let it expand, you cannot produce a, do it, say a, a, everybody please. Do you feel that blade of your tongue expands? Okay? But when you say, do it, it is somewhere in the back of your tongue, the root of your tongue. Okay? Or for example, when you say ch as in church, say ch or j as in judge, ch your tongue rises towards the heart palate. 
but when you say ah your tongue sits firmly on the lower jaw and also opens with the lower jaw letting the air pass. Similarly, you know lips, lips take a variety of shapes to produce different kinds of sounds. When you produce a sound like e as in cheese, say cheese, cheese. your lips expand you know like you know, through if you do not expand your lips you cannot produce, if you do not spread your lips, lips you cannot produce a sound like e. Can you? Okay. But on the other hand there is a sound like oo, say it, you have to round your lips. If you do not round your lips you cannot produce e, spread your lips and say oo, you cannot. If you want to produce oo, you have to round your lips. If you want to produce e, you have to spread your lips and there are intermediate positions. There are intermediate positions, slight rounding, lot of rounding, no rounding, absolute rounding, you know, total, you know, for example, when you are happy and you say, oh my God, thank you, I have made it through the JE okay? or something like that, God bless you. Okay? So, you know, there are some organs of articulation which perform in one manner and there are some others which perform in another manner. The first division is some organs of articulation can move and take a variety of shapes. Can you look at the list and underline those organs which move? Can you look at the list and underline those organs of articulation which move, which do not remain static, which change position even if slightly, even if very little, but they move. they are not static, they are dynamic, they move. Underline those, you can talk to each other, no problem, please. Uh, you can take the list in the camera, okay, just focus, just zoom on the list. Okay. Okay, who can now tell me the names of organs of articulation that move? Say yes or no. Do jaws move? Yes. Lower jaw does. So, right, lower jaw. Not both the jaws, the lower jaw. Okay. Do lips move? Yes. Does tongue move? Yes. yes. Do teeth move? Not until you are very old. If you lose your teeth, you have difficulty producing certain sounds. We will talk about them. Does alveolar ridge move? Where is alveolar ridge? Behind the, behind the upper teeth sorry, we are not behind, behind and above the upper teeth, you know, behind the upper gum, behind the upper gum. This is where alveolar ridge is, behind and above the upper teeth. Does hard palate move? Okay. You can feel it. Take your finger inside. I hope you have a clean finger. I want you to do it actually, please feel the difference, is it hard or soft? So, in the front half of the mouth, the palate is hard, take your finger inside. If you do not have, if you have clean nails, if you do not have clean nails, keep them out. Okay? Put your finger inside and see, is it hard or soft? Okay. Now, you know, go for the palate in the rear half of the mouth and touch it there. Is it soft or hard? 
it is soft. Now wipe your fingers clean, please. Okay? Do they move? No. Neither hard nor soft palate moves. They are where they are. They stay put. Okay? Does uvula, the little tongue, does it move? It does. It has a very versatile role in the production of speech sounds. You know? It is uvula. It is the gatekeeper. All the air, all the air that comes out of lungs come to a particular pass here. You know, the lung air comes this way, comes up to here. And here, this uvula, the gatekeeper, okay, just as the on our campus we have a main gate, etcetera, etcetera. Here it is the gatekeeper. The uvula decides whether you are going to produce a nasal sound or you are going to produce an oral sound. Okay? What is the difference? When you produce a nasal sound, the air comes out through your nose. Keep your hand here and say mm. Do you feel warm air coming through your nose? Okay? But when you say, when you produce oral sound, then air comes out of your mouth, not from your nose. Keep your hand here again and say ah. Where does air come from? Come through? It comes through the oral passage, comes through your mouth. It is uvula that decides whether air goes through the oral cavity, oral passage or through the nasal cavity, nasal passage. How does uvula do that? Uvula can either rise and when it rises, it blocks the nasal passage. So, all speech air only has one escape. All speech air escapes through the oral passage, but when it is lowered, then oral passage is blocked. Okay? There is no passage here, it is blocked and this passage becomes wide open. Okay? It is this thing, this particular thing, okay, uvula. If it is lowered, do you get a nasal sound or an oral sound? If it is lowered, once again, everybody please, are we together? Yes, sir. If uvula is lowered, do you get a nasal sound or an oral sound? Nasal, nasal sound. If uvula is raised, do you get a nasal sound or oral sound? Oral, oral, sound. oral sound, obvious, you know. It blocks, so uvula also moves. More than anything else, more than any of these things, it is this box. Extremely, you know, this is one of the heights of nature's engineering to have designed a box, the kind of material, the kind of alignment, you know. If you have to learn a lesson in engineering design, the, this, this, this is one of the marvels of nature. How could nature place it, produce it, keep it? in such a place and the kind of elasticity and the kind of functions it does. We are able to hear one another because vocal cords vibrate. You know, I will I will have an entire session on the function of vocal cords, but at the moment I only want to tell you, keep your fingers here, do not press please. You know, you might choke, but just keep your fingers here gently and say And now please say, say it alternately again and again and again. Do you notice any difference here? Do you notice any difference here? What is the difference? When you produce it vibrates. When you produce, it does not vibrate. It is the vibration of these vocal cords, these vocal folds that carries, that carries your voice to me, my voice to you, that we are able to talk to one another. Actually, many people call it by very different names. Vocal cords in some books are also known as, please write, phonator. 
P H O N A T O R, phonator. Oh, thank you, so kind of you. Vocal folds in many books are also known as phonator or by another name, resonator, you know, the resonance that you produce. There are some unfortunate people who through some, you know, uh, disease like if you, if there are people, you know, unfortunate people who get cancer of glottis, cancer of throat, in their case surgeons remove the voice box. They can still speak, but they would not be audible at a distance. You have to stand next to them to be able to hear them. Their lips move, the air, this, the air stream comes out, uvula still decides whether it the air will come out through the nose or through the mouth, but there is no resonance. So, vocal cords also move, right. Now, have you made a list of organs of articulation that move? Okay. Let us check our list. You will have to say yes or no. Yes means it moves, no means it does not move. Yes means, everybody please, yes means moves and no means it does not. So, I will now call out each organ of articulation and you will say yes or you will say no. Okay? Jaws, yes. everybody together, some people are sleeping early in the morning. Okay? Jaws, yes. lips, yes. nose, no. tongue, yes. teeth. No. Alveolar ridge. No. no. Only three people said no. Alveolar ridge. No. no. Hard and soft palate. No. 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 Uvula. Yes. 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 Pharynx. No. no. But you know they can swell, they can contract, but they do not move. Epiglottis. Yes. yes. It can go high up, low down. Glottis. Yes. yes. Vocal cords. Yes. Yes. Please write. Organs that move are called active articulator. Lips, tongue, uvula, vocal cords there. These are all active articulators. Others are therefore passive articulators. Now, passive is not a good term. You know, I am not happy with this term, but because these terms are used in the book, so that is why I am also using these terms. They are not exactly passive. The, a better description will be static articulators. They stay where they are. Without those articulators, without the teeth, without the upper jaw, without the hard and soft palate, without a lot of other things, we would not be able to speak. Yet, in literature you will find some things mentioned as active articulator and some other things mentioned as passive articulator. So, let us, let us take a recap. A speech air, a speech air rises in the lungs. I have not shown the lungs here. A speech air rises in the lungs and from lungs it comes to vocal folds. The first obstruction is at the vocal folds. Vocal folds may be wide open, may be closed. If it is closed, then speech air strikes the vocal folds and produces noise. From voc after crossing the vocal folds, speech air meets next obstruction at uvula. Uvula may be lowered or uvula may be raised. If it is raised, all speech air passes through the oral passage and you get oral sounds. If it is lowered, then all speech air passes through the nasal passage, you get nasal sounds. But it may be in the medial position as well. It may be partly raised, partly lowered. Then you get nasalized oral sounds. Say for example, when you say, uh, what is the Telugu word for mother? Amma. Amma. So, ah, uh, you know, ah uh is that. The uvula is partly raised, partly lowered. So, part of the air, just say, um, say it. You feel air coming out both through the oral passage as well as through the nasal passage. 
these sounds are called what are oral sounds oral sounds are those sounds that the production of which is possible because speech air comes through the oral passage what is the position of what is the position of uvula here uvula is raised then we have nasal sounds what is the position of uvula here uvula is lowered and then we have an intermediate sound that is we call it nasalized sounds what is the example of nasalized sound a lot of vowels which are nasalized like ah uh, okay like e you know hindi has uh, lots of them i think even telugu has lots of them you know right when you say ma ma you don't say ma ma do you we don't say ma ma we say ma ma the ah uh, you know or when you say eat brick in hindi okay lots of sounds where you have nasalized sound what is the position here uvula is partially raised or partially lowered uvula is partially raised or partially lowered so that you get nasalized sounds how do we get different kinds of sounds so that you know we have a variety of ka ka ki ki ku ku cha cha ti ti ta ta you know we get all kinds of sound it is the manipulation of these organs of articulation if lips are rounded we get u if lips are spread we get e if the tongue rises towards the heart palate touches it we get ch if it doesn't we get sh okay they are all within the same limited space but the versatility of these organs of articulation is such that slightest movement one against the other active articulator moving towards the passive articulator you know you get a variety of sounds when lower lip moves towards the upper teeth you get f as in fan v as in van but when both lips come together you get pa can you have pa without both lips coming together try you cannot okay similarly you know when you want to say wa lips have no role they 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 don't participate so in a variety of ways one interacting with the other the other interacting with one in close contact or in please write in approximation various kinds of movements of the organs of articulation produce variety of speech sounds in the next half a dozen classes or so we will look at how these organs of articulation move and how we get different kinds of sounds but before we do that it is very important that you and i know the relative position of organs of articulation in other words the diagram of the vocal apparatus it will be a wonderful thing if you draw it at least once a day for the next 4 or 5 days so that you know it gets implanted in your head then you will be better able to understand the mechanism of production of speech sounds if you want to change your pronunciation if you want to see why somebody sounds different from another person why lot of people don't sound like one another this is the difference in in the cases of some lips spread in nano 
nano inch a nanometer more than somebody else. It is these minuscule differences in the movements of organs of articulation that not only give us different sounds that also indicate different people. There is a reason why Lata Mangeshkar sounds different from her sister Asha Bhosle. Though they sing the same songs, they are both great singers, they are both great vocalists. Okay? But each of us does it slightly differently. If you want to design a machine tomorrow, which you want, which you, uh, you know, uh, want to have, you know, the machine to have the ability to talk like human beings, then machine will also have to produce all of these variety of sounds before it can produce human language. In the next few classes, we will be talking about mechanism of speech production. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Okay, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. <coughs>